Okay, I forgot to turn the AC off, but I turned the AC off, so hopefully, as long as there isn't another leaf blower, we should be fine. All I saw were his eyes, velvet dark, the kind of umbra that shadows would envy. Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free review of The Star-Touched Queen by Roshani Chakshi. Sometimes in the flurry of our visual media culture, in Twitter and Instagram and Netflix and chill, I forget the power that words possess. And Roshani Chakshi definitely helped me remember. This book is evocative and enthralling. It is, it is a magic spell interwoven into a work of art, and I love it. Now, from the descriptions floating around booktube and even the synopsis on the inside desk cover, I honestly thought I had already read this book. You can't tell me that some of these descriptions really do sound like The Wrath and the Dawn by Renée Adier. Now, don't get me wrong, The Wrath and the Dawn is amazing. Renée Adier is amazing. You should definitely read those books. The Star Touch Queen is very different. They sound the same at first blush, but as soon as Princess Mayavati's father shows up at her door with a vial of poison, you, you know it's gonna take a turn. Roshani Chakshi interweaves several Indian myths in order to tell a story about a young woman who must journey farther and be more clever than she has ever before in order to save her husband from a fate worse than death. There's a lot more to it than that, but this is a spoiler-free review. Okay, okay, but if my love for this book were a pie chart, it would be like 30% the writing, and like 30% the plot, and like the, and then 30% for the characters, and then with that extra 10% specifically reserved for Kamala the horse. So, so good. Okay, characters. First you have Maya, our leading lady. She is whip smart and honestly relishes the idea of dying an old maid. She has this terrible horoscope in a culture that puts way too much credence in horoscopes. And so she honestly thinks she has a shot at being a advisor and a scholar and not having to get married like all of her half-sisters. Her little sister Gaudi is a dreamer with some serious ambition. Amar is steadfast and as honest as he can be, but there is a veil of mystery that is not easy to brush aside. Gupti is awkward and loyal and I love him. Hell, even Mother Dina has some redeemable qualities. Kamala definitely wins though, she just, she just wins. And then the writing! Okay, but listen to this. Light burst through the threads, dazzling me with a thousand streams of color so vivid that I could feel it seeping warmly across my fingers. Shards of evening sky, the cool frost of lonely mornings, drenching nectar-sticky heat. I could feel the color as if it were dimension of time and space, heavy and solid, full of flavor of life. It snuck under my tongue like a bright candy, and voices, loud and soft whispers and howls of passion so grand that tottered on the edge of mythic, and sorrow so plangent they trailed the, their own shadows. I couldn't take it. Ah! I don't know if I did it justice, but ugh, yes, okay. Fans of Hemingway will definitely call this flowery and ornate writing, but I... I'm so impressed and moved by the fact that Roshani Chakshi could not only like suck you into her world, but then make it so fragrant and and delicious. It has it has smell, it has taste. If you if you reach out, you think you can feel it on your fingertips. And oh, I just love it. As for the plot, I think everything was perfectly paced except for the middle bit of the second half, which went way too fast. And I accept that it's supposed to be reminiscent of that folklore and, and oral culture of Indian mythology, but for the whole rest of the book, they, they accepted the reality of human transportation. This bit didn't. That's all I'm saying. Overall, I give this book five out of five stars. I loved it. The writing is lush. The characters are beautiful. And, oh my god, Kamala the horse. 
Also, Crown of Wishes is coming out soon. Um, it's not a sequel per se, but it is in the same in the same vein, and um, and I'm really excited to read pretty much anything else that this author writes. So let me know what you guys thought, and I want to know if you've read this book and how you felt about it. If you haven't read this book, if if you want to read this book, just just talk to me about books. I love books. Adiento.